Hasta this. And that's where my Spanish stops. I'm still learning, so <laughs> that's what I have. Well, um, I was telling someone how um, touched I am to have been invited to come here. Um, these ideas of freedom and uh, the free markets, to so many people, you know, so many people out there, they argue about it because it, it, it matters, but I think um, many have lost touch with how much it matters, right? So um, it is with great pride that I'm standing here talking with you today on this most historical day. I personally will never forget this day of October 1st, 2022. Just, I won't. Um, you know, universities, they provide essential uh, intellectual guidance for influential persons in a nation, right? And it is critical that universities provide the guidance that lead to, pro uh, to progress and prosperity. And the University of Esperitas is one of a few universities that globally that was founded on these very important principles of truth, knowledge, freedom. And it matters how something is created. This intention that this university was created with really does matter. So, you know, when I was a young entrepreneur, I had absolutely no idea how much and how influential intellectuals actually were. You see, for me, it was just like these boring people that looked as dusty as the books that they were surrounded with, you know, just plain boring people that were talking too fast for their own good. I simply had no interest being anywhere near them. I was an entrepreneur and we're like, oh, we're the doers. You guys are, I don't know what you do over there. It seems to me like you're fooling around all day long. I don't know why you're so slow about everything you do. Why do periods, commas matter so much? And then you know what? God would take care of it. He made me fall in love with an intellectual who, tells, who will tell you I'm a recovering intellectual. So, but you know, <laughs> beyond the joke, what happened is um, I then became to, um, it's when I started to try and understand how is it that the world works? How is it that economies work? Especially, some of you don't know my story, but you know, I was born in Senegal, the west coast of Africa, and uh, my family, um, like many African uh, families, became uh, immigrant, you know, economic migrants to Europe. And I will tell you more about that. But it is as I was, um, you know, trying to understand how the world works, that I came to understand that, um, unfortunately, many intellectuals were very anti-capitalist. And when I discovered that, it just, it, it, it became exalting on one end, but also very depressing on the other end. How is it that all around the world, most intellectuals are anti-capitalist? And so, um, I say anti-capitalist, but I really would like actually call them crazy socialist. And um, I actually have no pity, no, no patience with uh, anti-capitalist intellectuals because their ideas cause great harm in the world. And you see, this is another thing. I never understood how much ideas matter, never. And I think so many of us out there, we're just out there living our lives. We don't understand that ideas matter so much. Um, so for me, when I understood all of this, I made a personal commitment to myself to actually learn about ideas. And so I will tell you why to me this place matters so much and why it gives me so much hope and why I never forget this day. So I told you earlier, I come from Senegal, the west coast of Africa. My family, immigrant um, family to Europe. But you see, my family was, fun, was lucky in the sense that they did not have to emigrate under the horrible uh, conditions that most African people coming from a country like mine have to emigrate under. You know, Las Palmas for me for the longest time, it was a place that I was afraid of flying over. Why? Because in these waters, so like you walk out of this door here, you, w you look across and you see the water. It's beautiful, right? But for me, what do this water mean? This water is the grave <laughs> to so many of my people who tried to go from my country to make it to Europe, this is the entry point for them to Europe to go and get a job. And right now, there are most of them lying at the bottom of the ocean serving as fish food. So Las Palmas for the longest time, that's what it meant. 
So it's interesting that today I'm here and we're talking about these ideas, right? So, um, but why do my people have to do this? They are leaving these countries because back home, we made a fatal mistake 60 some years ago of siding with the wrong side of ideas. See, most people don't understand that when most African nations were getting their independences, we're talking late 50s, early 60s, what was happening at that time? People like, like you in this room know what was happening. At that time, we were at the height of um, you know, socialist ideas. That's, I guess it's Dick Cornwell, who was a uh, Mises secretary. One of the first things he told me when he met me, um, he told me about how back in those times, you could fit all free market people in one phone booth. How far have we come? But it is during those times when capitalism was almost dead. The idea of free markets was almost dead. It is during those times that people, my people, were rising towards independence. And I do it this way because I am still questioning whether we're still independent or not. So, um, but it is during those times that we supposedly got our independence. But what does it mean? It meant that you were this time where as my people were becoming free, the ideology en vogue was socialism. And at the same time, they're looking and, 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 um, and it was fighting with the Western ideology represented by you know, freedom and their uh, economic system was capitalism, right? And so at that time, these two blocks, East, West, were fighting for influence looking South. And at that point, my people said, look, you, the West, enslaved us later colonized us. So surely, what is it that you're pushing for? We are not going to be for that. And at that precise moment in time, we made the fatal mistake to side with the Marxist socialists of our time. And this is how, as, mo as these African nations became free, we, all of these, you know, presidents of these newly liberated countries were actually socialist presidents for most of them, the rest of them communist. People don't even remember this. But this is how we got to where we are. So 60 some years later, my country got its independence April 4th, 1960. So today, 62 years later, you look around and you're like, how come you guys are still so poor? Well, we're poor because 60 some years ago, we made the decision to embrace socialism and we made sure that all the policies in place were actually a manifestation of socialism. And of course, we all know that um, if you practice socialism, at the end of the day, you're gonna have nothing to show for when it comes to uh, prosperity building, right? So this is how we got to where we are today. And do you know what this prosperity, um, what this lack of prosperity because we followed the wrong ideology has cost us? People, dead in the water. Those who don't try to um, take the water route, they take land route, they get stuck in Libya. In Libya, right now, in 2022, I get stuck in Libya, someone like me, I'm sold between 300 and $500. That's my price on the slave market. Yes, that thing exists. And the world got to know about it just when uh, CNN came up with it. But people like us, like me, we know about this because we are on little WhatsApp groups where oftentimes we get little texts asking us to contribute money to buy somebody's freedom back so they can come back home. So you see, for me, at some point, these ideas are in my blood. I mean, it's, 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 it's skin deep, you know? It's, it's, some of you might argue them for, this, for the validity of, of, of itself in itself, but for me, we're talking about the difference between life and death, between peace and, between, uh, peace and war, right? Um, it's, just, it's just too important. So um, I think that... Um, by introducing students to ideas that lead to progress and to prosperity, you guys will be creating a positive future for our people, for your people, our people, people everywhere, and you will be a lighthouse of truth for everyone around this region and really around the world. So um, for me, when I found out about all of this, I was so, my first reaction was a reaction of liberation, right? Of um, there's nothing worse than having an illness of any kind, whether it's mental illness, physical illness, whatever it is, but no one knows what is causing it. And then you know what's causing it. And then what do you look for? You start to think, but God, why, why? And I think all around the world, we're fighting with each other, but me, it took me a long time, but now I know who to blame. And I blame the intellectuals. I do. 
So this is your chance to do it right. This is your chance to do it right. And you've got to win this. We cannot afford every other you know, few decades to go back to this place where capitalism, the ideas that we support, are fighting with these silly ideas of socialism. I would call them silly if they were not as harmful as they are, if they have not killed as many people as they have. But you guys, now, here, we're trying to do it right. This has to win. This has to be the lay of the land. It has to. I'm not even going to ask you for it. I'm going to commend you. Gabriel, you have no choice. So this is what I have come to tell you. Because if you forget sometimes, because sometimes you know we get into this very comfortable life of ours, I make it a point. I spend half of my time back home as an entrepreneur in Africa because my factory is in Africa. I, sp I make it my point when I'm home to live with the people whose life I'm fighting to change. So I never, ever forget, even given all the privileges that I have today, that I never forget what it is that we're still fighting for. And um, it's a great irony, I think, that this university is being built here because that's the greatest um, tribute you can pay to those, to my people who died. They're gone. Nothing we can do for them. But there's so much more we can all do for everyone else. So I will leave you with that. You have a great job, but you have the best job. And we, I count on it. And um, there's nothing more to tell you guys, but just may God be with you, and may we make this work. <laughs>